I, I don't even want to admit this, but I think the world is flat. And I remember having a reluctance to talk to people about it because it was a paradigm that had to be broken that I knew it was just going to be loaded up with ridicule. I knew it. And uh, in who, fact, who was the first person? You, you remember the first person you tested it on? Well, there was one person in my family that initially that we had a discussion over it and they entertained it a little bit in the beginning. And then quickly after that, you know, they wanted no part of it. And so that caused a lot of friction, unfortunately. But uh, so that was the first person that I had a discussion with. But the first person that I had a real discussion about that was open was my partner, Rebecca. And I remember that um, I had put in the queue to watch on TV. I, I use Plex, which is uh, I can queue up YouTube videos and watch them on my television. And I said, hey, I, I've got some videos that I think you might be interested in. And she goes, oh, what are they about? So I said, well, it's about the flat earth. And she just stopped. I'll never forget this, Jamie. She looked at me and she said, Mike, now you've gone too far. <laughs> So, right. but she did it in and a she, nice she'd way. She'd been supportive all the way before that, right? She'd been totally supportive of your work. Yeah, yeah, she was very supportive, but the look on her face was very perplexed. I remember that. And, but look, to her credit, she said, okay, let's watch them. And so we did. And when we did that and afterwards, we started queuing up more and more flat earth material. And now she's completely on board. So it was one of those things where she had an open mind. She was like, okay, look, all right, this doesn't make sense to me. This cuts across the grain. This is not what we were taught. It seems ridiculous, but you know what? I'm going to go with it. Let me see what this is about. And like I said, you know, I, I have to full credit to her, to Rebecca for doing that, because there's so many people that won't do it. They won't even touch it. They won't go there. They'd rather throw rocks and ridicule and make fun of the people that are bringing this information forward. Look, I tell people all the time, whether you believe it or not, it's mind provoking. It's going to get the critical thinking going, or it should, if you're not completely asleep. But even with that logic, you just still can't win people over. They, you know, they would, they'll just walk from it and think that we're crazy. A group of scientists placed five monkeys in a cage and in the middle, a ladder with bananas on top. Every time a monkey went up the ladder, the scientists soaked the rest of the monkeys with cold water. After a while, every time a monkey went up the ladder, the others beat up the one on the ladder. After some time, no monkey dare go up the ladder, regardless of the temptation. Scientists then decided to substitute one of the monkeys. The first thing this new monkey did was go up the ladder Immediately, the other monkeys beat him up. After several beatings, the new member learned not to climb the ladder, even though he never knew why. A second monkey was substituted, and the same occurred. The first monkey participated on the beating for the second monkey. The replacements repeated until what was left was a group of five monkeys that, even though never received a cold shower, continued to beat up any monkey who attempted to climb the ladder. If you ask the new group of monkeys why the beatings took place, the answer would probably be, Well, I don't know. That's just how things are done around here. The Marians, the, the Nordics, the Vikings, the, the Aztecs, the Cherokees, the Mayans, the Toltecs, they all had flat earth cosmology. And right. we never taught one day of this in school. Nobody knows anything. Here, the, the Egyptian cosmology. The ancient Egyptians believed the ground was a more or less flat disk that floated upon, upon none the primordial ocean from which creation had begun in time immemorial, and out of which the Nile continued to flow. The sky was a solid dome-shaped thing and was often said to be the belly of a goddess, typically Nut or Hathor, whose body arched over the earth with her feet on one horizon and her hands on the other. Her midsection was held aloft by the in the air by God's shoe. Sounds pretty cool, huh? Yeah, and you, you know, know something? This is ubiquitous, Jamie, across the ancient texts and, and ancient going back to the ancients and modern mainstream education wants you to believe that all of these ancient civilizations were just hunters and gatherers and they were clicking rocks together to start a fire just so that you can just discard any of the stuff that if anybody does do research you just discard it as it's completely in the realm of what they refer to as mythology although i will argue that mythology true mythology 
is not fiction. There's a lot of truth, nonfiction, and metaphors and uh, analogies that are used in order to, to communicate and present information. But of course, today, nobody knows any of that. So they just chalk it up as just a bunch of wild-haired storytelling that took place a long time ago. And it can't compete with today because today, this is the technology age. This is the age of information and so on. So it's, it's very interesting that you're on that point because the more we go Mike, back... Mike, let, 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 let me just break you right there and just ask you one question, which will destroy the thing you just said completely. Just one question. Yeah. How'd they build the pyramids? Oh, I know. That's it. So when the myth, if you go into this mythology didn't exist, didn't happen, I mean, give me a break, guys. What do we have for knowledge recording today? Thumb drives? I mean, if you don't stop and think these ancients had so much more knowledge than us and respect in awe of what they've left behind for 5,000 years that we still can't figure out today. Right. The 13 acres of Giza that are, it's only just like slightly off and it's on fill where they drag these stones, 2.3 million of them and laid it in perfect alignment with the heavens. I mean, we've lost contact with our, with our as above you know, by purpose, the light pollution of the cities they're putting rubber soles under our shoes. I know you did the, the show on, uh, on uh, the Beatles. Um, right. I don't know if you covered the fact that, that Theodore Adorno, that, Tavistock Institute guy who wrote the Beatles songs celebrated the putting rubber under everybody's feet with the Keds and Converse shoes with the album Rubber Soul, disconnecting us from the Earth's vibration. And now everybody wears rubber, and no wonder our consciousness can't ascend. But the ancients knew, and this is they knew of a you know here here's uh, ancient Vedics. I mean the oldest language we have. Herto, son of Neph, born of an egg, descended upon in the highest heaven. He was a most gracious lord, and in deference to Um, smote against the rocks of heaven. So when the egg was broken, one half the shell ascended, the other half became the foundation of the world. I mean, it's it's in our cosmology. Uh, here's Nordic. Uh, they're held in the branches and roots of the world tree. You get you dars, darasil, which is the tree of knowledge and wisdom. They all had the central roots of the tree, and it went across the pond all the way to the Toltecs, the Tibetans. That they believed in a geocentric cosmology, a mandala-like world system of concentric ocean and mountain ranges surrounded by an axe. Says Mount Meru, Mount Meru being the North Pole, right. uh, the yin and the yang of the Chinese being a flat geocentric and umbrella-like covering surrounded it was similar to the beliefs of the Greeks, East Indians, um, and the Aboriginal people of the Americas. The Chinese astronomers believe the heavens takes its body from the yang, so it is round and in motion, and then the earth takes its body from the yin, so it is a flat and quiescent. The brilliant astronomers of China held this unchanging belief until... The Jesuit astronomer missionaries came to China in the 17th century. <laughs> <laughs>